Hello and welcome to Elena Ascension Network. I am Elena and I am honored to be your light friend eternally. Through inspired meditations and channelings from the cosmic overlord Jade Fire and other divine masters of white light, let us proceed together on our spiritual journey as lovers of Gaia and beings of divine light. I invite you to visit our sacred space of learning and oneness www.jadefirelight.com slash blog to read and hear discourses that provide self-empowering divine wisdom. From my soul to yours, in love light and faith divine, I am Elena Jade Fire. So you are all aware that your reality is what you have created. And you are also aware that everything that is created begins with a thought. The thought is the seed that flowers into that which you call your reality. Where does this thought emanate from? Your belief system? Correct. Where is this Belief system dwelling in your conditioning, yes. Where does the conditioning dwell? In the mind, yes. Where does the mind take shape? In conscious, in that which you have called the collective conscious. So your beliefs that emanate from your conditioning, that dwells in the mind, all of this is shaped by the collective consciousness. So this takes you further into the discussion of consciousness and creation. So from this introduction itself you are now aware that though your thought creates your reality your very thought depends upon the collective consciousness. And the collective consciousness is constantly being fed by the thoughts and beliefs of all. So you have a relationship where they feed off each other. They are dependent upon each other. No-win yes, we thought you might say that. That seems like a no-win situation. How does one change the thought if that is being ruled by consciousness? And how does one change consciousness if that is ruled by thought? There must be other people with consciousness like ours who want change. Should we tap into that? That is exactly the subject for today. It is not a no-win situation. 
for though all of humanity is part of the collective consciousness all of humanity is also part of the collective unconsciousness that 2% to 5% of the brain that you use taps into and influences in turn the collective consciousness the remaining 95% and more that you do not ever in awareness intelligently use taps into and is constantly accessing the collective unconsciousness so what is this collective unconsciousness before we answer that question let us go back several 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 eons eons upon eons upon eons to ancient civilization where the human framework mental emotional spiritual and physical was far different from yours but at that time the collective consciousness was 95% of the brain and the collective unconscious was only five in that eon the human form was in complete awareness of the consciousness of the god source not not we repeat not an intelligent knowing that there is a god source a consciousness of the god source the god source to them was as real and as vital as you beloved are to her and then started the process of separation from source the furthering of separation from source as the furthering began the collective unconscious started to expand and the collective conscious began to reduce it then crossed a certain critical point at that point at that crucial stage between the consciousness and the unconscious something took place there was what you might call a membrane put upon the heart upon the third eye and upon the joy chakra the seat of your soul a membrane this membrane would ensure that the human form had no conscious awareness of the god source but could have an intelligent knowingness now you might say again the seems a no win no i think 
these membranes were placed so that the human form could have the experiences chosen by Gaia. For you are nothing else but Gaia's creations, just as Gaia is nothing else but a multiversal creation. So your entire evolution process has been chosen by Gaia. And this evolution process determines that in order to reach to that point of critical ratio between consciousness and the unconscious, the human form would have to take personal responsibility. The journey that you are all on currently is back to that point. Once you reach that point, you will find that you will have to do nothing. But you have to reach that critical point again. Where once it is reached, the equation between consciousness and unconsciousness will go back to greater percentage of consciousness and far less of the unconscious. And that can happen in a human form? And that can happen in a human form. It has already happened in several human forms. This unconsciousness is the realm of magic and alchemy. And the collective consciousness is the realm of what you call practicality and reality. And the time has come now for all to waken from their sleep. For there are some like you who are awake and alert and active. But there are a large number who are still asleep. And though your personal consciousness journey has begun in order to reach that vital point, the collective consciousness has not. And for there to be a mass revolution, transformation in humanity, it is the collective consciousness that reaches that point again. So, we need more of you. so you need more of you. Those whose personal consciousness is now moving into the realms of that which was earlier unconscious. That is what we have called enlivenment. When that which was not alive in consciousness now becomes alive. Enlivenment. The truth is, and this might seem to you with all our talk, that the human consciousness is never going to reach that point. But the truth is, if there is one percent of humanity, one percent of humanity, that reaches that point, the rest of humanity will follow. It isn't 100% Not at all. Human, we as humans move into that realm, 
when it suits us, when there's a the That is right. And then we move back. That is right. If you are constantly moving into the unconscious, experiencing to that level of your personal evolution, the God source, but then choosing, choosing, beloved, choosing to move away from that to the consciousness of that which is currently contained in collective consciousness, you do not form part of the one percent. And all we need is one percent of humanity. One. How do we maintain ourselves on that? By consistently choosing to create realities that exhibit your awareness of that which was earlier unconscious. Choose to exhibit that reality. But here there is a hurdle. You are also part of the collective consciousness. That in itself is a natural hurdle. For however strongly your personal consciousness develops, you are still caught very strongly in the collective consciousness of which you are a part, of which you will remain a part. Now that collective consciousness does not, and hear us well, does not intrinsically believe in magic and alchemy. It believes in magic and alchemy to a level where a certain shift and a change is possible. But if we ask you right now to delve into that level of the unconsciousness whereby you could teleport, the only reason why you would not be able to delve into the unconscious is because the collective consciousness believes it cannot happen. In that ancient yawn that we spoke of, teleportation was common. Telekinesis was common. Clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairsentience was the done. Because their collective consciousness believed that it could be. You don't believe it. You intrinsically, you as part of the collective consciousness, don't believe that it can. Right now, while you were talking, sir, I imagine myself in my house and the situation that it could be my son walking through the door, my niece and my husband having a fight. But do I believe it? <sighs> do I need You to? can teleport. You can levitate. But if you constantly need proof, <laughs> you do not believe it. So do we allow ourselves not to prove? Absolutely. Why is it that we have constantly reiterated, ask not for validation? For when you ask for validation in any area, beloved, 
it means there is no belief in that area. So it is like you watching the magician at work and wondering what he has up his sleeve and how he could do it for you know it could never be possible. And so if you should actually see a person levitate, you will instantly look for some invisible strings. That is your greatest hurdle. Of course, we are not doubting that. That is the conditioning coming in the way, but you are still attempting to be that one percent. And if you wish to be that one percent, will you make these excuses for yourself? Now that, from where your excuses come, where you are going to trap the magician, that comes from the conscious intelligence. The collective consciousness translates itself into what it knows and does not know. In other words, what it calls the possible and the impossible. And that conscious intelligence has a stranglehold which prevents the collective unconscious from revealing itself in all its glory. And because we know that these are your hurdles, that is why we give you certain workshops and classes and tools and meditations. So that in some area, in some way, that hurdle might not be as insurmountable as it seems currently to be. So if you believe that the magician can, is doing it, they believe in it, and we don't ask for validation. Which magician? <laughs> But you must start by trusting us. That is right. Not only trusting yourself, beloved, but by believing that you are worth it. All over your world, people want their land and their diamond ring. <laughs> and their relationships and their money and their jobs and their careers and their status and their power. And they want and they want and they want. But, beloveds, we tell you that is truly not what they want. They only believe they want the money and the power and the land and the jewels. That is not what they want. What they truly want is love and acceptance and acknowledgement for they do not love and accept and acknowledge themselves. They do not want the money. They want the love and acceptance and acknowledgement that they believe will come with the money. They do not want to grab your land. They desire the love and acceptance and acknowledgement that they believe will come when they have even more land. 
and we are not talking of one and two persons, we are talking of governments and nations. The human race must, must move into the collective unconsciousness where lies the treasure of self-worth. But that treasure can only be approached when you are ready to believe that you are God's source as well. You already are ready to. Then what stops them for the next question? The collective consciousness and your constant scuttling into it. We go back. We are not living in it. There is yet another way. That the collective unconsciousness can become the collective consciousness. Mass prayers, large energy movements, energy healing that takes place across the globe. The force generated by the intent of such mass work breaks through the barriers of the unconscious and pulls it into consciousness. Haven't you noticed how in the last two decades everyone is talking in terms of energy whether it is the banker or the spiritualist. There is yet another way, again a mass way. You need to have a mass to break through the unconscious. When you have turmoil and chaos, for example a terrorist attack, What is the focus of the human race? The focus is on the hate, the terror, the fear, the anger, the injustice. From out of the unconscious, you draw out even more consciousness of hate and terror and anger and war and violence. If in that moment, those who have been awakened could turn their attention to those same terrorists with love, embrace them in love, talk to their spirits and say, I know you are doing this. Because you seek love and I love you. But the truth is their acts are so heinous. Their crimes so grave. So cruel, so dastardly. That you go into anger. And hate for their despicable acts, which they are, which they are. They are so passionate about it, that is just the same as all of them. But on the other side, it brings collectiveness of people who want to bring out good. And that is exactly what we are coming to. Instead of getting caught in the acts of the terrorist. Why not look at those acts as an opportunity for the awakened ones of the earth to come together in a mass movement of love and forgiveness, of empathy and sympathy. Okay. 
You will still break through the unconscious, but instead of drawing more energy of hate, you will bring in love and togetherness and unity. Well, doesn't this happen when tsunami happens, earthquake happens? Any chaos, any chaos, in tsunamis and earthquakes, the energy that is emitted is one of sadness and grief. Use the chaos of the earth to come together in masses upon masses. To come together, to hold humanity together by strong chains of love. If you can overcome that hurdle by a mind shift, that terrorist act, that tsunami, that earthquake, that volcano, will actually be a messenger of a new dawn. Not mere survival, beloved. It is not a question of survival of the human race. We do not want the human race to survive in its current form at all. We would like it to transform into its angelic form. Is that what cults in the past? Of course, that is what cults do. They come together in a unison of energy. And we are not here to debate whether right or wrong. But, there is a unison of energy. And eventually, beloved, what does the terrorist also want? Like the banker who wants to become the richest man in the world. And the landowner who wants to have far more than he can even see. The terrorist also only wants love and acceptance and acknowledgement for inwardly he feels worthless. How do you think, beloved? How do you think terrorists are created? Their so-called leaders choose men who feel most worthless. And their worthlessness is then emphasized whereby they believe that the only thing they are worthy of is this terrorist act which will bring them glory. Do you really believe that man who is in God's image can otherwise be capable of such heinous crime? So now you have Two areas of responsibility. One was explained to you last time. You are the creator of reality through your thought. So you have to be disciplined about your thought. Choose your thought. Choose your belief system. And the second, attempt to become that one percent of humanity. Work with commitment. Dedicate yourself not to 
anything except becoming that one percent of humanity. If everyone dedicates themselves to becoming that one percent of humanity, we will get the one percent of humanity. That is all we ask of you. Join together just one percent. And those like you, Infuse in them the same commitment. We must gather this one percent. We must gather this one percent. How many billions are there in your world? When you bring it down to numbers, beloved, what truly is one percent? We leave you with that. Why not create that reality by thinking about it every moment of the day? I am the already created 1% of humanity required to reach the critical point between consciousness and unconsciousness. You know that your thought can create the reality. And if you can all think this thought on and on and on and on and on, the reality will be Regimes of Melchizedek.